Hey everyone, a really warm welcome back. In this video I want to talk about how we get on in our caravan with no oven. So let's get on with the video. Everybody ready? Good, then let's get going. So first things first, and that's to explain the background behind uh, the rest of the video. So this caravan does not come with standard uh, with an oven, and that's perfectly normal for high mirror Reba vans and lots of other uh, German built ones as well actually, and continental ones. The bigger Heimer vans and uh, lots and lots of the motorhomes though do have them added when they're built for the UK market, uh, but these particular Ariba feeling models don't, and I'm sure the Ariba Tourings don't either. I'm sure I could have had one fitted if that's what I wanted, but this is such a small space here that the extra storage space was far more important and appealing to me than an oven that I'd use occasionally. And you know, whenever there's cooking going on, you always get uh, smells, which can be glorious at the time, but then they also tend to linger long after. And even when baking, you also tend to get a, a bit of a buildup of a sort of greasy residue um, in the atmosphere and on the surfaces and so on. And because this is such a tiny space uh, with fabric ceilings here and up in above the top bed, I wanted to keep all the cooking as far away from the sleeping and lounging areas as possible. So that's the context in which the rest of the video is set. Well, that's not fair. We do boil the kettle and cook toast in here, but that's about it. Now, had we gone for a massive family-sized van, possibly some huge twin axle, then I expect I would have felt uh, differently about having an oven in the caravan. And of course, the other point is uh, that because this is such a tiny caravan, we almost always have an awning up, quite often just a small porch one, but there's always just about enough room for a little slow cooker or something like that out there in the corner. So it's easy to be doing cooking outside. Anyway, let me talk you through our solutions. So when we're off grid, especially in the summer, for example, we get on perfectly well using either of our Cadax. We've got both the Safari Chef, the small one, or the big uh, Carry Chef 2, and we use either of those depending on how many uh, people are away at that, on that particular trip, or whether I have uh, certain gourmet cooking plans in mind. Other great brands are, of course, available, and probably they may well barbecue better than the Cadax, but it's the versatility of the Cadax that works really well for us. In the winter, we can, of course, continue to use either of the Cadax, uh, but if it's that cold or more likely pouring down, then a different solution is required. And to date, we've always tended to favour hard standing pitches with electric uh, during the winter. So we carry one of two mini electric multi cookers with us. So let me show you those and tell you about them. So our first caravan multi cooker was this. It's the Von Chef 8-in-1 multi cooker. And this can act as an oven and a hob and a steamer and a slow cooker and a grill and whatever combination of those things or different settings that uh, the manufacturer claims allows you to get to eight different functions. And using this I've cooked everything from grilling burgers to roasting whole chickens to cooking uh, our special one pot uh, herb and lemon chicken and potatoes to cooking fajita fillings and then warming up uh, the wraps. And then of course there's all sorts of slow cooked stuff, uh, including pear upside down cake.
So that's served as well. And then in a typical consumer moment, the uh, JML Halo Wave Air Cooker Deluxe, that's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Uh, caught my attention. So I purchased one of those. It's a halogen cooker, but it's got a bit of a party trick up its sleeve in that it has a rotisserie function. Yes, really a rotisserie function. Cool, hey? Anyway, let's just take a pause for a moment before we get back to food pictures and to talk about power. So these cookers are, of course, both powered by electricity and the Von Chef 8-in-1 is rated at 1350 watts and the, well, can I just call it the Halo Wave because otherwise the whole name is just really too much of a mouthful. Anyway, the Halo Wave is rated at 1500 watts which means that uh, each of those draws somewhere between 5.8 and 6.5 amps. So that's about an amp or so less than one of those super powerful rapid boil uh, domestic kettles. So most big modern club sites and similar sites have no problem at all uh, with wiring up for 13 amps on their hookups on each of the pitches. But I am mindful of what we're drawing because if I've got the Truma Combi 4E heating running and the hot water and that's all running on full whack, that could be drawing up to 1800 watts, which equates to 7.8 amps. So if that's happening, then I need to, and I need to switch on one of these things and that hits into its max, then potentially that's over 13 amps that we're trying to draw. So I need to be a bit mindful about what the hookup is on the site. Um, clearly, if it's uh, 5 amps, which hardly ever happens in the UK, then we can't even run the heating, really. Um, but if it's 10 amps, which does sometimes happen, then we have to consider which one of those we want on at a particular time. But on a, on a normal pitch, it's not usually a massive issue. Because I usually run the Truma actually on one squiggle instead of two, which means it's running at half the wattage or 900 watts rather than the maximum 1800 watts that it can run at on the two squiggle setting. So it's only drawing 3.9 amps on that lower setting. And in fact, uh, because this caravan is tiny, I think level four out of six on squiggle one is the max we've usually tended to have it set. Other, of course, than blasting some heat in after we've uh, driven and set up in sleet or the beast from the east, as I think was the worst case of having the heating on. In normal circumstances, we don't have to run it anywhere near the maximum it could manage. So regardless, uh, before switching on any of the electric cookers, I do though check that nobody's fiddled with the settings on the heating and we're still on squiggle one because other than our low wattage toaster and kettle and the caravan battery charger, there isn't much else in the caravan actually that uses significant power. This is of course extra cautious. Uh, because other than a toaster and kettle, which are using their power consistently while they're carrying out their operation, the cooker devices and the heating and so on just use their maximum power when they're starting up and then they click on and off in a controlled way by a thermostat in order to maintain um, the level that they've been set to. So they work in a slightly different way from a toaster which just goes all out to um, get the operation carried out and then turns itself off completely. Anyway, so back to cookers. So this has this neat little rotisserie function and a whole host of attachments which fit onto that actually. So there's this basket, for example, which is recommended for popcorn. Or even chips. And of course this is an air fryer so it's a little squirt of oil across the chips rather than deep frying them and they will get spun around and uh, cooked much more evenly and then there's a rectangular basket as well which adjusts for different sizes of salmon or meat snakes and so on and this rotisserie kebab skewer rack and perhaps the pièce de résistance unless you're plant-based of course, is a single rotating uh, chunkier skewer for whole lumps of meat or a smallish, smallish if you've got two teenage boys, a smallish chicken. And as long as your chicken isn't too large, you can actually get your roast potatoes in underneath as well. So there are also baking and grilling trays and a height adjuster to get to that perfect crispness on your bacon or a thoroughly cooked pizza. And of course, it's not just the halogen element, but there's a whole fan system going on in here, which means not only does it cook well, 
but it actually cooks very quickly. So although it's a bit heavier and it's a bit more awkward to carry around than the 8-in-1 multi-cooker, this Halo Wave actually has become our go-to choice and it now lives all year round under the smaller of the front two lockers and at 5 kilos is considerably lighter actually than a fitted gas oven which would be around 15 or 20 kilos. And as I said, the other benefit of this halogen fan oven is that it's incredibly fast. Uh, so we can have a full tray of, say, four or perhaps five frozen pan au chocolat. Um, we can have them cooked and served hot in about six minutes. Um, obviously it's small though, so, you know, when we were cooking for eight a few weeks ago at uh, Rooksbury, the pastries had to be cooked in shifts. And I'm sure because of the size of the oven, it would be more shifts than I'd have to do in a conventional caravan oven. But then each shift was super quick. Um, so I suspect that overall, everything was done in much less time than it would be in a conventional caravan oven as well. All right, so that's it. I hope that was helpful. So in conclusion, we get on just fine. You know, if we want stuff that's cooked in an oven, then either we've got to use the Kadak or we've got to use one of the electric ovens. And to do that, we've got to be on a hookup. But to be fair, you know, that's a compromise I'm willing to make because I'd much rather have the payload and the cupboard space than I would carry a conventional gas oven around in the caravan. So, as I said, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now. See ya.